If you've been training for a while, you probably understand the importance of cardio. Not only will cardio make you feel better both inside and outside the gym, it's going to improve your health and increase your work capacity. So for those of you lifters, that means when you're in the gym, you can go harder and for longer. That's always a good thing. The biggest problem with cardio is that it's often very boring and one dimensional. The last thing I want to do is go jog on a treadmill for a half hour. If I saw that written on my program, honestly, I would probably just skip it. So when I'm trying to figure out my cardio for the week, I usually try to think in terms of three main things. One, will this get me winded quickly? Will doing this movement or circuit or whatever allow me to get in and out of the gym as quickly as I can? So usually it's going to be some type of high intensity cardio. Two, will doing this also allow me to develop another skill simultaneously? Now, in my opinion, pretty much anything is going to work your cardio. You could get winded or get your heart rate up at the very least just by going for a walk. So you might as well focus on developing another aspect of your fitness at the same time, whether it be uh, increasing your jump height or your speed or your power or whatever. This is also going to keep you coming back. It can be kind of boring to know that your sole focus is just improving cardio, but if you know you're coming in so you can jump higher, you're going to stick to it. And three, will this cardio take away from my regular gym days? I don't want my cardio to take away from my squat or my deadlift or any of that stuff. I want to be able to continue making progress there while also getting more fit at the same time. So with these three ideas in mind, it quickly becomes obvious that the movements we choose should probably be full body. We want to make the entire body work together as one solid unit. This also means that if we're setting up a circuit, for example, we want to try to make the cardiovascular system work as hard as is possible by forcing it to pump blood through the entire body. One of the best ways to do this is by alternating back and forth between an upper body focus movement and a lower body focus movement, say a push up and a squat. And one final conclusion that I think we can safely come to with everything I've said thus far in mind is that power or explosive based movements are probably going to be best. Movements that you can always apply more force into, regardless of how strong you are, regardless of whether it's your own body weight or an external load, you can always push harder. A good example of this would be the swing. So if you're swinging that thing, you can always try to swing it harder. You can always try to swing it faster. All right, and with all that said, now let's move on to what I consider the ultimate cardio tool. It's gonna to be this thing right here. This is a little suitcase that I filled with rocks. Now, you don't have to use a suitcase. You could use a backpack or an old army duffel bag or a pre-made sandbag, whatever. Just something that you can be relatively sure isn't going to open up on you if you're throwing it around. Ideally, it will be as awkward as is possible. It's going to make your body have to work that much harder. And you probably want this thing to weigh somewhere between 60 and 90 pounds. 90 pounds if you're a beast, but for me, this thing is 75 and it will floor me within a minute if I try hard enough. Now, if you've never lifted something like this before, there are a few things you should know. Lifting a sandbag or a suitcase or whatever odd object you happen to find, it's not the same as lifting a barbell. So with a conventional deadlift with a barbell, for example, you start like this. Your feet are relatively close and that weight is out in front of you. Now it makes sense with a barbell because you can kind of pull that weight up against your shins. But with something like this, it's never going to work. You're creating an unnecessary lever that's going to make things so much more difficult on you. What you always want to do is center yourself over that weight. Make it so that external weight is directly under your center of mass. It's going to make things a lot easier for you. Another thing you should know when lifting something like this is that while a conventional deadlift with a barbell may be somewhat of a pure hip hinge, right? You have a little bit of knee bend, but mostly it's just hinging at the hips to lift that bar. When you're lifting something like this, I think more of a hybrid approach is better. So hinge down as far as you can until you notice your back starts to round. Stop there and then squat the rest of the way. Now, some of those stronger guys who can lift like 400 pound Atlas stones say that a pure hinge is best for lifting this stuff, but I've never found it to be the case. Maybe I'm just not strong enough yet. And also for our purposes here, we're going to be doing a lot of reps and it's probably better on your body to keep a neutral spine when you're doing this over and over rather than trying to just pure hinge it and you got that rounded back doing that over and over. Just my opinion, but I think for our purposes here, doing a hybrid between a hinge and a squat is going to be best. So hinge, squat down the rest of the way, pick it up. All right, now let's move on to a few movements you can do with a sandbag or a suitcase or whatever it is you found. All of these will check those boxes from before. They're going to get you winded quick. 
you're going to be developing something other than just cardiovascular endurance, and they probably won't take away from your regular weight training because this bag is pretty light. So the first one is gonna be a variation on a clean and press. So all you're gonna do is get into position like before, over that bag, pick it up, it's like this. I'm gonna to toss it up, it's that front rack position. If it's awkward, the uh, weight will shift, press it back down. This next one here is probably my personal favorite. This one's gonna get you out of breath faster than pretty much anything else that I've ever done. This one's gonna be the sandbag or suitcase to shoulder. So all you're gonna do, start with that bag, long ways rather than horizontal like that from before. Stand over the thing, hinge down, bend as far as you need. And all you're gonna do is try to throw that thing up on your shoulder as fast as you can. Think of driving with your sternum or upper chest in order to fling that thing up as fast as you can. So like this. Now, this one's really gonna work on that power development. You can always push harder into that bag. And this last one here is gonna be the simple bear hug squat. So it's gonna be like that clean and press from the start. Start the same way, toss it up, get into position like this. All you're gonna do is squat. When you hold it like this, you might run into your legs a little bit, depending on which implement you're using. If you wanna make it a little bit more difficult, increase the range of motion, you can turn it sideways. So the bag is out here. Makes it a little more difficult too to hold on to. Squat down, come back up. You can also start combining all these movements into one. So you could do something like this. On the shoulder, then squat down, come back up, back, do whatever. Now, when you first start out training with something like this, if you don't have much prior experience, it's not gonna take much to get a good workout in. You're gonna be so bad at the movements that that fact alone is gonna get you winded quick. So you could, for example, say, I'm gonna to try to throw this thing to each shoulder 50 times and see how long it takes me. Then next time you come in, just try to beat that time. After doing that for a few weeks, you could go to the clean and press, set a timer for 10 minutes and see how many times you could do it in that 10 minutes and try to beat your time that way. But eventually you will become more proficient at doing these movements. And it's like Dan John said way back in the day, the best form of cardio is doing something you suck at. So once you suck less at this, you're gonna have to start mixing things up. And that's when circuit training really comes in handy. All right, so when we're thinking about taking things to the next level and maybe setting up a circuit, there are a few different steps you could take. The first one is pretty easy. All you have to do is take those movements from before and perform them in a circuit fashion rather than as standalone movements. So whereas before, maybe you were setting a timer for five minutes and seeing how many times you could do the clean and press within that time limit, maybe now you could set a timer for 10 minutes and then rotate between all three, see how many you get that way. You could also start setting up ladders or down workouts, whatever you wanna do. Now that I've explained those first two levels, there is one final step you can take, a final level, the final frontier you might say. This is gonna be where we start to mix in elements from other areas of fitness. This is gonna be where you become a true endurance machine and not only will these circuits challenge your cardiovascular system and your muscles, it's gonna challenge your mind too. So let me show you an example of something that I set up a while back that got me extremely fit. So I have been trying for a very long time now to explain in words how this circuit is set up, but it just sounds like a bunch of nonsense when I say it out loud. So. I think the only way you guys are gonna get it is if I put a video on screen. Uh, but before I do that, I do just wanna say, keep in mind that this represents the extreme. You never have to do anything like this if you don't want to. If you stuck to a basic three to five exercise circuit and made progress on that forever, you'd be good. But if you wanna try something out like this because it seems fun to you, I do find it a lot of fun. So I'm gonna play that video, and maybe try to walk you through it a little bit, but Keep in mind that this is something that you don't ever have to do if you don't want to. Picture this. Say you have a basic circuit that contains within it four different movements. Let's say pull-ups, push-ups, rows, and dips as an example. Now, rather than thinking of four different movements, think of that circuit as containing within it four different slots. And right now, as it's set up, each slot has one movement in it. Well, to take it to the next level, 
let's create a mini circuit to go within each of those slots. Now, it's not gonna go well for me if I try to read off what I have created to go in each of those slots, but if you're watching the screen there, you might get a good idea of what's going on. Essentially, what we're doing here is creating something that resembles a form in martial arts or a routine. It's been my experience that weaving together many different movements into a chain leads to an increased cardio demand while keeping localized muscle fatigue to a minimum. What often happens when performing extended circuits where higher reps are involved is you're held back by individual muscles and mental boredom. The task is so mentally easy and straightforward that your brain almost starts to zone out. This can actually be very beneficial when going for rep work, but when we want as much of our effort going towards high intensity endurance as we can, it can help to stay more alert. This variation in movement forces your mind to stay actively engaged. Rotating movements in this way also allows for intraset muscle resting. When you're constantly moving from one thing to another, your muscles won't be wearing out in the exact same way over and over, which allows you to go for longer. This also leads to an extreme case of the blood flow example from earlier. Your heart has no choice but to pump blood to every corner of your body, which increases the cardiovascular demand, meaning you will wear out faster. It's also been my experience that the more you do this stuff, the more routines you create, the better you get at it. Initially, a five movement rotation may be all you can remember while putting forth max effort. But as time goes on, you'll find you can link together endless movements into one long circuit. This also solves the problem I mentioned before. The best cardio gains come from doing what you're bad at. Well, if you're pretty good at performing individual movements, combining them into a circuit may start you back at a lower level of efficiency. Sure, you're good at doing each movement individually, but when combining them in new ways, you're a beginner again. Every circuit has its own transitions and peaks and forces you to perform each movement from a different starting place and level of exhaustion. This allows us to get more out of a movement and reap the rewards offered by each individual variation for longer. Well, at this point, I realize I could probably just keep talking about this stuff forever. I find cardio very enjoyable, and maybe if you guys start implementing some of this stuff from this video, you'll find it enjoyable too. I do realize I went off on a bit of a tangent. Originally, I just wanted to show you guys how this is a great training tool, but I know we went into some more intricate details there for a little bit. So, hope you guys like the video. If you want to see more about this suitcase or more about setting up those really advanced circuits, let me know because I'll always be glad to make more videos. So, thank you guys for being here, and until next time, thanks for watching.